Hey, this is Mrs. Lawson for the Chapter 4 review. Um, let's get started. All right, uh, the key points on this graph, for the most part, have been marked for you. Um, the only thing that has not been marked, which we will go through now, are the end behaviors, the arrows. So I'm just going to put some arrows here. And again, on the left, F x is always negative infinity, and on the right, x is always positive infinity. And it's the y values that will be different. So on the left, x is going up. I'm sorry, y is going up, so that's infinity. And on the right side, it's going down, so y is negative infinity. So the first thing I'm going to take care of is the increase and decrease. So I'm going to go through and just uh, mark the different things that are happening. So for the uh, decreasing, I'm going to be highlighting that part in yellow. So it's going to be decreasing in this portion and then it's going to switch to increasing so we're going to put increasing in this color and then it's going to increase here and then it's going back to decreasing and so i can take a look at the different uh versions that i have here so starting with the decrease i start at negative infinity and i work my way down and i remember we use the x value so negative 0.732 and then I have an increase, so I'm going to start at that negative 0.732 until I get to 2.732. And then I switch back to decreasing, which is the 2.732, and ends with infinity. So that is my increase and decrease. All right, so let's talk about positive and negative. So I'm going to erase these. All right, so positive and negative. So I will do... Um, positive in this color and I'll do negative in a different color. So first I'm going to start with this is where y is positive and then it switches to negative. So here's my negative. This is all negative all the way, this one big chunk. And then I switch back to positive. So here we go. And then I switch back to negative. And again, I just go from one to the other. I don't do all positive or all negative at the same time. So starting with the positive, I start at negative infinity and to negative two. And then at negative two, I switch over to negative until I get to one. And then I go back to positive from one to four and then negative from four to infinity. Uh, domain and range, again, what I wanna do is domain are the smallest x and the largest x. So if I look at my graph going left to right, the smallest x that I put was negative infinity, and the largest x that I ever wrote was infinity. So I could do this. Remember, you do have the option of all real numbers. And when I look at the y's, that's the range, I want the smallest y to the biggest y. So I'll start from the bottom of the graph and work my way to the top of the graph, and the smallest y that I ever wrote was negative infinity, and the biggest y that I ever wrote was infinity. Or again, I could just do <clears throat> all real numbers. And behavior, remember, I'm going to be really picky about this. I'm going to have to write it as, hold on, not quite sure what happened there. Okay, I don't know if you're, if the screen went black, black on you guys, but it did for me, but anyway, we came back. Anyway, end behavior. So gonna be really picky about this whole end behavior thing and how it's written. So LIM, X with an arrow, infinity. So as X is getting bigger, what is F of X or what is Y doing? And I'm just looking here and it's getting smaller. And then I'll write it again, but this time I'll put X is going towards negative infinity what's y or what's f of x doing. So I'll be looking over here on the left and it's going up, okay? All right, that is problem number one. All right, the next set of problems. Um, I'll add, subtract, multiply, divide. I just gotta pay attention. Is this really a neighbors meets neighbors kind of situation? So starting on number two, this is a neighbors meet neighbors. Those sets of parentheses are right next to each other. I'm gonna add the opposite here. And the first neighbor that's going to go meet everybody is x. So it's going to be 2x cubed. You guys probably forgot that we even did stuff like this. And then x visits negative 3x, so I get negative 3x squared. And then x visits the 2, and I get 2x. And now the negative 4 is going to go visit everybody. And when it visits 2x squared, I'm going to get negative 8 
x squared. If it visits negative 3x, I'm going to get positive 12x, and then it goes to visit the 2 and I get negative 8. And then I can just combine my like terms, and here comes the final answer. Okay. All right, there's number 2. So on number 3, I actually have three neighbors, and I need to pick which two I want to multiply first. So I'm going to add the opposite, and I'm going to have x plus negative 1 meet x plus 2, so we're going to start there. So x goes to visit first, and I'm going to get x squared plus 2x, and then the negative 1 is going to go visit, so I get negative 1x and negative 2, and when these neighbors are done meeting, I get x squared plus 1x plus negative 2. Now that they have met, I'm going to bring the neighbor that hasn't met anybody yet, this x plus negative 3, and have it meet the x squared plus 1x plus negative 2. So it doesn't matter who meets who, so let's just have continue this x squared will go meet, okay, and then 1x will go meet, so I'm going to get a 1x squared and a negative 3x, and while I'm doing this, I'm just stacking my like terms, and then negative 2 is going to go meet everybody. So I'm going to get a negative 2x, and then I'll get a positive 6. So when I'm done adding everything up, I'm going to get x cubed plus negative 2x squared plus negative 5x plus 6. Okay, moving on. Um, so 4 is not a neighbors meet neighbors type of situation. Um, there's a subtraction sign. This is where I do like to go through and add the opposite, so I'll be doing that. Some of you don't, but I'm going to. So left to right, this x cubed minus 2x squared, I'm going to add the opposite. And then I have plus 4x plus 3 and then minus. This minus is different because it distributes to everything in here. So what I'm going to do is add, and then I'm going to take the opposite of each term that I see in here. So I'm going to take the opposite of this, so it becomes positive. I'm going to take the opposite of this, so instead of subtracting 5x squared, the one thing I'll change is adding. I'm going to change one thing about this. It's already adding, so I'll make it a negative 6x, and then here, instead of subtracting 3, I'll add 3. Because remember, my goal is to have everything be addition. And now I can go through and pair things up. So starting with the left set of parentheses, I have 1x cubed, I have negative 2x squared, 4x, and 3. And then I'm going to stack my like terms under it. So I put it, have a 4x cubed, I have a positive 5x squared, a negative 6x, and another positive 3. And now I'm just going to add up my like terms. Okay, and this is my final answer for number four, and that is a six. It's a little tough to write numbers on the screen. All right, number five, this is a neighbor's meet neighbor situation because they're, those parentheses are next to each other. So x is going to go meet everyone first, and I'm going to get 2x cubed. I'll get 3x squared plus a negative 1x. That's by me adding the opposite there. And now the six is going to go meet everybody, so I'll get 12x squared and I'll stack it with the other x squared. I get 18x and a negative 6. And now I can just combine or add my like terms. So I get 2x cubed plus 15x squared plus 17x plus negative 6. And again, those 6's do not turn out very well. All right, number six. So this is not neighbors meet neighbors because there is addition here. I'm just going to go through real quick and add the opposite left to right, and that only happens with this minus four. And now uh, I'll rewrite the problem so I can see those stacked like terms. So there's the first set of parentheses. Here's the second set of parentheses, um, which I have a 3x to the fourth. So I'm going to put that in the front because I want my answers to be in standard form. And then 3x cubed and a 2. So some of these don't have anything to add with. They'll just drop down. So when I'm done, I'm going to have 3x to the 4th, 10x cubed, 3x squared, 8x, and negative 2. And that's number 6. All right, 7. Again, not neighbors meet neighbors. This is um, combining like terms. So I'm going to go left to right and add the opposite. So 10x cubed minus 2x squared, I'm going to add the opposite here. 
and then I have plus 5x minus 4, so I'm going to add the opposite. And then this subtraction will apply to everything. So when I add, I'm going to take the opposite of this term and make it negative. I'll take the opposite of this term, make it negative. And again, my goal is addition, so when I do the opposite here, instead of subtracting 8, I'll just add 8. So, and again, I've only changed one thing about all of those terms here. So rewriting it, again, some of you aren't going to rewrite it. And then I'll start lining up my like terms. And the 5x has nothing to combine with, so here we go. 3x cubed plus negative 5x squared plus 5x plus 4. All right, so we've done a lot of adding, subtracting, now and multiplying. Now we're going to get into division. So remember, there are times when you can use synthetic division, and there are times when you can't. Number eight is one of those times that you can't, because in order to do synthetic division, what I have to divide by is x plus or minus a number, and this is x squared. So I'm going to get this set up. Uh, this will be going in my box. I want to make sure I have all my x's. I do, and I'm going to add the opposite just so I don't lose any of the signs of the numbers. And in my box, you don't need to, but I'm going to put a 1 in front of this. And remember, I leave all those plus signs out. Putting a 1 in front of that negative x squared. All right, and then outside the box, again, i got to make sure I have all my x's. And I don't have all my x's in here. I'm missing just the regular x, so I'll be putting a placeholder. Okay. And I added the opposite on that minus 4, and now I'm going to start. So the first thing I'm going to ask is, what do I have to multiply 1x squared by to make it 1x to the 4th? And to get from 1 to the 1, I need 1, and x squared to the x to the 4th, I need x squared. So 1x squared. So I'll put that above the other x squared. And now I'm going to draw these three branches, because 1x squared has to multiply to all three of those. So 1x squared and 1x squared is 1x to the 4th. 1x squared and 0x is 0x cubed, and 1x squared with negative 4 is negative 4x squared. And I'm supposed to subtract everything, and this is where I like to get a different color and add the opposite. Um, so I'm going to add and do the opposite, the opposite, and the opposite. So this column will cancel out, this column will become 2x cubed, and this will become 3x squared. And then I can bring everything down and start over. So start the whole process over. What do I have to multiply 1x squared by to make it become 2x cubed? And to get from 1 to 2, I need a 2. And to get from x squared to x cubed, I need another x. And now 2x cubed will follow those three branches over here. So 2x to 1x squared is 2x cubed. 2x to the 0x is 0x squared. And 2x to negative 4 is negative 8x. Again, I'm going to subtract everything. I like to grab a different color and then go through and add the opposite. So I'm going to add and do the opposite, the opposite, the opposite. So first column, this cancel out. This set becomes 3x squared. This cancels out, but I will put 0x and then bring this down. And start the whole process over again. So what do I have to multiply 1x squared by? to make it become 3x squared, and that's just a 3. And now the 3 will follow the 3 branches. Again, the 3 branches are, are these 1, 2, 3. So 3 to 1x squared is 3x squared. 3 to 0x is 0x. And 3 to negative 4 is negative 12. Subtract it all. That's the all means the parentheses. You can go through if you want and add the opposite. So I'm going to add the opposite, the opposite, the opposite, and what you'll notice is that everything cancels out so you get zero. So how do you write this answer? Well, since there is no remainder, what's on top is the answer. But if I did by chance happen to have a remainder, so I'll write this with the remainder of zero, what's on top is this big part, then I'll make a fraction, and the remainder is the numerator, and what I divided by is the denominator. And this would be how I would write it if I had a remainder. But technically, this part is the only answer. Okay? All right, moving on to number nine.